Okay, I'd like to call the Tuesday, October 27, 2020, Board of Library Trustees meeting to order. Mm -hmm. So we have minutes. Did everyone have the opportunity to read over the minutes? Yeah. Yes, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes, and I would like discussion after the sec second. Okay, I'll second the motion. And discussion? Okay, just a real minor thing on the foundation. Uh, we It says that um, a maximum of $3 per craft for the um, take and make. Mm -hmm. It was a guideline. Um, it, a suggested maximum, uh, a safe, suggested amount of $3 a craft, but I wanted to make sure the library had flexibility in case they found something they wanted for more expensive. So if that could be uh, amended, that would be good. So you want to add in at a suggested maximum price? At a suggested, yeah, that'd be fine. Um, well, it, it was in there, but but I think what Linda's saying is it shows in the minutes at three dollars a craft. But wasn't it wasn't it three dollars? Was it <clears throat> were there two price points or was it five <clears throat> five dollars for both the adults versus kids? Well, it was actually a suggested amount of three dollars per craft with flexibility for an increase if the library staff felt um it was appropriate, something like that. We never gave a maximum, but we wanted to allow the flexibility in case the library staff who was um, doing the crafts found something they liked that was more than $3 per craft. And we did mention how the adult crafts might be more expensive than the crafts for the younger audience. Okay, so the amendment, it's to amend it to read the staff is making a variety of take and make crafts for different age groups, which will be paid for by the foundation at a maximum of $5 per craft. No, we never set a maximum. At a suggested cost of $3 a craft per craft with flexibility for a high amount if the library staff feels appropriate. Um, finds a more expensive craft. Or... Okay, so you wanted to read, it will be paid for by the foundation at a cost, at a suggested cost. A... Okay. Suggested cost. Of... A suggested cost of $3 per craft with a maximum of $5 per craft. Well, we never really set the maximum. Okay, just tell me how you want it to read, Linda, okay. so I can write the... Okay, yeah. At a suggested cost of $3 per craft with flexibility for the library to increase this amount. How's that? With the flexibility for the library to increase this amount. Okay. We didn't want to tie their hands and we trusted them. <laughs> yep. Okay. Are there any other questions or concerns? Okay, I'll call for a vote for the amended minutes of Did everyone hear me? Oh, that's Teresa. Okay. Hi, Teresa. Hi, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So There's like, some background noise. Aye. 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 Are we all in favor of the amended minute? Linda, yes. John? Teresa is. Karina is. Diana is. Johnson. Great. Okay. Thank you. All in favor. Okay. Okay. Um, so, director's report. Um, for statistics, um, 
trends seen in previous months are continuing. Um, checkouts of print materials um, since last month have increased 23%. Um, they are still down 43% from pre-COVID levels. Um, Overdrive eBooks dropped a little bit. They've gone over 700 checkouts. They're a little bit below this month, um, but they are still up 80% from the same time last year. Um, so again, trends are pretty much continuing a lot of digital use still. Um, financial update, um, salary spending on is on track. Um, expenses is up slightly from what it should be this time of year, um, but that's most likely due to the fact we talked about before how our revolving fund is not bringing in what it usually does. So we're having to rely on our other expenses line more. Um, so I am, as I said, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on that and see how it go progresses throughout the year. Um, the financial report for state aid was submitted on October 14th. So we are all set with every, all the reporting forms are in for state aid. So we should get some news later this year about what award amount will be given. Um, for programming, um, about 45 people um, tuned in for the Jenna Elliott organizing workshop. And we've talked before how we got a lot of positive feedback. Um, the Peter Jamiro off the talk was um, very well received. We had 21 participants for that. Um, he shared examples of how we had dealt with um, instances of racial injustice in his past. And we sent out a list of diversity themed books to all the participants afterward. Um, and we had uh, several virtual kids programs in September, a baby Yoda um, art class, a back to school theme program and attendance for kids programs was 29 for this, that month. Um, any questions about any of those so far? Okay, um, um, I just had one question actually. Yeah. Or, um, the financial, you have mentioned a couple of times how the revolving fund is down, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. But are expenses down due to the um, copy you're not being used as much, or is that pretty much a stable cost? It is pretty uh, much a stable okay. cost. We get, okay. you know, we have a lease and we pay a certain amount each month, and it, it doesn't really, because we get so many copies. So if we go over the amount that we're allotted, then we have to pay extra. But if it's under, we just pay the, that monthly lease amount. So it's pretty okay, stable. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, moving on to building maintenance, um, I'm actually going to be meeting with the town administrator on Thursday. Um, so it's looking like we're going to have to have a new phone system installed. We, um, we've we always had problems with our phones and usually the issue is with Verizon and we call them and they come and fix it and it's never perfect. You know, we've always had some, a little bit of interference inside, but it's been manageable. Um, but in, within the last month, I would say, um, it's gotten pretty bad. The lines, I don't know if some of you have called and noticed, um, a lot of static. And I did have Verizon come out um, recently. They did fix something, but then it didn't really seem to help. So um, I had somebody come back and they said that the problem is inside of our building. So I had a phone tech come out to check and they said that the power supply for our phone system is failing. And it's so old that they don't have, they don't make replacement parts for it anymore. Um, so we are going to have to get a new phone system. So I'm going to talk to him about funding options and then possibly talk to the IT director about technology, you know, maybe upgrading the technology. Um, so, you know, the, I mean, there's really, it's, it's for the whole building. It's us and the senior center. So I have made Mary aware of it. Um, but it's, you know, it, it, sometimes it gets so bad now that we can't even hear people talk. We're definitely going to have to move forward on this pretty quickly. Um, I'm also going to be, um, well, actually this Thursday also the building inspector is coming to just do a regular inspection. So I'm also going to be um, bringing up to him and the town administrator when I meet with them about the siding issues. Oh. We're doing that spring, which we I'm talked sorry. about. Karen, can you repeat that? The building inspector is coming? Yeah, on Thursday for an inspection. And then I'm, I'm, when I talk to the town administrator Thursday, and then um, he's coming later on Thursday. So I'll also mention it to him. Um, the siding, the, how we want to move forward with that in the spring. Um, so I'll be discussing that with them as well. With the um, with the town administrator or the building inspector or both? Both, both yeah. Okay. And we, um, had, we had said um, maybe while um, the building inspector was in the building, he could look at um, the area where the leak is continuing to make sure yeah. there's no mold. Yeah, that's part of the siding. They think that's what's Oh, okay. causing that. So 
Um, I'll definitely make, mention that to him again. Um, and then also we talked about the um, heating system. Um, we There's another person coming out tomorrow to look at that from the town planner sending them out to um, the town's trying to do an energy efficient grant. So um, I'm still waiting to hear on that to see the status, if it can be um, replaced with the grant instead of um, town funds. That's, that, sorry, that's the heating system? Yes. Yeah. Um, Okay, um, just other some other miscellaneous things. Um, the ALA is putting out a grant called Libraries Transforming Communities, and I'm gonna look into see if we can um, apply for that. It's would award small libraries $3,000 for a community engagement project. Um, there are two rounds, one is the deadline is December, and then there's another one in the spring. Um, the Some of the ideas maybe it's like one book, one community, something like that. Um, or maybe doing something like along the lines of the, the diversity talk we did, continuing that, doing some diversity theme programming. So I'm still thinking about, it's gonna depend on if feel like we have enough staff time to do that grant. So I'm still looking into it, what the requirements are. Um, we're also trying to partner with the schools about um, a program through Overdrive that lets students use their um, school cards to access our Overdrive collection. Um, I think they're already starting to work with Whitman Library on it, so they're hoping to get um, us involved so that they can have access to Old Colony and Sales eBooks. So I'm waiting to hear on that one. Um, the friends are going to do a fundraiser. Um, some of you might have seen the advertiser doing signs of like educational themed signs. Um, we already have 12 pre-orders of as of last week, I think, and we're going to get, be getting a kiosk that we're going to set up in here, and then people can purchase them. And then as we've done in the past, um, I applied for a cultural council grant for museum passes. Um, and then we're also gonna do, Kate's gonna apply for a second one for a summer reading program, hopefully in 2021. So we'll see how that goes, but um, whether it has to be virtual or an in-person, obviously we don't know yet, but um, she's gonna try to find something for that. Any questions? All looks good. Okay, good. okay um, moving on to, COVID-19, um, so updates on library services. Um, since our last meeting, we have expanded our hours for appointments. Um, that's going very well. We've blocked off the first and last half hours of each day. Um, staff are you know, using the time to do circ duties and get things ready for people to come in and do curbside. And they found that very helpful, having that time to kind of set things up. Um, we are now being fogged twice a week. Um, so Mondays and Wednesdays, um, evenings um, that's being done and we also changed our overdue reminder notice schedule we had some people who are um, now we have the longer quarantine for seven days um, some people were getting overdue notices even though they returned an item and it was just still in quarantine um, so we put have sales push that back so that people aren't being notified um, incorrectly um, and I think I talked about um, last time about changing from doing appointments to just letting you know just limiting the number of people that come in but not having to do appointments um but right now i feel like with the, with this being in the red zone and cases look like they're going up i'd like to kind of keep things i don't want to really make any changes now so i kind of want to keep things the way they are for at least for now and then hopefully maybe in another you know we'll kind of see where how things go in the next couple months um to see if we're able to change that i do feel like it's could be a little bit of a obstacle to some people having to call for an appointment but um but like i said i'd rather not change anything right now with the way things seem to be going um so any questions about any of that um could you give us an idea of how many people a day do come into the library by appointment um so it's averaging about 15 people a day okay um, good I mean, sometimes it's, you know, 10 and other times it's 25, but averaging um, is about 15. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can move on to, so request amount for um, equipment and furniture for print release. So I think we talked before about, um, I wanted to try it right now, the print release station. So if somebody needs to print something, it goes through Julia's desk, um, her computer there. Um, we have the printer behind, behind her desk. Um, so I wanted to get a computer um, and some furniture to set up a print, the printer and the computer in the center of the library so that, um, and then a coin machine 
so that people would be able to do it, you know, it would all be patrons and they would go up to the, the um, computer themselves, they would release their print job, pay for it. Um, so, you know, minimizing staff interaction. Um, a couple of the items I'm hoping can go through COVID funds and be paid for that way. Um, but there's some, a couple of things that we can't do through that, um, the computer in particular. So I was hoping I'd like um, to request that you approve up to $1,500 for me to spend to purchase um, any the computer and other equipment and furniture that can't go through the COVID funds um, to get that set up. I'll make a motion to allow Karen to spend up to $1,500 for the equipment um, not able to be purchased through special COVID funds as described. I'll second it. And is, are there any questions, concerns? Uh, can I just um, read back my scribbles of the motion? Um, give me one second. Mm -hmm. I should probably uh, have Karen list the individual things I didn't, sorry. All right, allow Karen to spend up to $15 for furniture and equipment. Um, at, you say for um, print release station. For print release station. I wish you could see how fast I'm writing. <laughs> um, all right, so allow Karen to spend $1,500 for furniture and equipment for print release station that cannot be covered with COVID funds. Yeah, that sounds great. Right. Yep. Okay, all in favor? And who was, uh, who seconded that? I did, Kareem. Teresa Go ahead, Teresa. Okay. I was just saying yes, I'm voting yes. Kareem. Diana, yes. Linda, yes. John? John, yes. Okay, all in favor. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm sorry. On um, purchasing, could I just ask a question? It seems that the oh. mobile hot, hot spots are very, very popular. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at how people had them reserved and all. Do you feel too uh, adequate at this point? Um, well, I we, was going to see kind of how, you know, how they went out. Um, uh -huh. And then just in terms of cost, though, I'm not, I wasn't sure right now that we could afford to get any extra, especially if, it, you know, I, like I said, I kind of wanted to see how popular they were here. Um, I expect them to be popular, so we you know maybe going forward we'll have to look at getting more. Um, but I just thought two kind of to start with to see how um, how things went with them. Okay, I had looked at um, the reservations and it didn't look like they were really available. That's why I was wondering. Okay, no, yeah, I didn't really check. Really I um, tell right now. And the other thing, if these are so popular, um, I think we mentioned possibly. Um, having some electronic devices for patrons. Is that something you'd want to consider? Yeah, I mean, right now, one of the things I'd wanted to get was Chromebooks, but there's, I think there's about 6 million back ordered. I so that. to get them is, you know, it's going to be, it'd be a while. So, um, you know, that's something that once kind of we have all this other stuff set up that I would definitely want to look into. Um, maybe once it kind of, and even a lot of the other technology, like there's, there's a lot of wait list for them. Um, right. So, I didn't. I wondered actually if sales had any in with some of the back orders. But yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. No, I um, think if you look online at any of them, there's very very minimal available, and you have to purchase mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. Okay. Just. Uh, Linda, were you inquiring about, um, with regards to the hotspots, how many? how much they're being used or about getting more both if okay. they if they it appeared from the sign out on the um calendar events that they're v being very heavily used and not readily available i didn't know if that was accurate and um but i guess we'll wait and see when we have yeah, a look i'll have to check i haven't checked on it um and just see what make sure that that's accurate too because since it's a new system set up, I want to make sure it's running all right. All right. So, Karen, you'll check on it and report back at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, um, I see they seem so popular, though. 
Okay, um, recap of the meeting. So um, I'll just start off and then Kareen, I'll pass it over to you. Um, so Kareen and I met with the selectmen on September 29th. We went over the letter that we, um, we sent to them um, and I gave them an update on the status of the construction grant program from the state. Um, I think the meeting went very well. They were very open to us being involved in the discussion. Um, you know, we talked about um, library, you know, future library services, what that might look like. Um, and so they are going to try to have Kareen added to both McQuan and Plymouth County committees. Um, I did speak to Greer the other day and she's working on figuring out how to get that set up so that um, we can be added to a November meeting um, and have her join them. So um, I don't know if you want to add anything, Kareen. Um, no, that about wraps it up. I did call Mara. And um, she told me to call um, Mara at the MBLC, is it? Yes, she yeah. said you could check with John to check with town council as far as that I'd be just, you know, coming to all the meetings and not having any voting rights. Because mm. to me, if there's, um, a motion in regard to the library, I have to abstain. Mm. So um, maybe you could talk to John about that and he could talk to Kate. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I don't have it in front of me. She told me to have someone to call in Boston to check with also. But then by the time she got back to me, it was the day before my surgery. So I really have to wait till next week to. Um, be able to move around or to sit and make phone calls. Corinne, I'm not, I'm not sure that that's true that you have to abstain. Um, on the committees that are appointed, you know, for instance, I sit on the CPC and I sit on that on behalf of the Housing Authority. And so anytime Housing Authority business comes up, I speak to that issue and I obviously speak to it, you know, on behalf of the Housing Authority. Okay. Um, and I know that, you know, for instance, the, the, the person feels they also have different representatives. So I think, um, you can certainly sit on the committees and sit on it, you know, with the library's perspective. Okay. All right. Sounds good. But would you just, we'll just check with John then just to make mm -hmm. sure everyone's comfortable. Yeah. And okay. it will come up later on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The selectmen, when we presented this, they weren't really sure about all that. So yeah. Yeah. I think, we'll, I think Greer was working on it to see. Okay. Great. Yeah. And the later, um, well, I was, I had started to watch the beginning of the um, Leckman's meeting tonight. Um, and they gave the date for the next Leckman's meeting. Um, I think there's one for November. It is the 3rd and the 17th. And then I think December 1st. They gave three dates. So. Um, I, we may have to wait till December then, because I think we're probably going to have to have a meeting on the 17th for the, to vote for the budget. Right. And I'm, I'm yeah. thinking also, I think it would be easier for me. By then, I can drive. And okay. Go to the meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. All right, just a clarification. What was the date that you met with the selectmen? Um, September 29th. And it's to get Kareen added hopefully to get her added to the committees or to the agenda no to the to the committees the mcquan reuse and plymouth and County the Hospital yeah. right okay that's they what i wrote so i just wanted to make sure i had it right they didn't have a problem with that and they were very happy with what we mm -hmm. you know presented so yeah yeah it's, they, they're posted on youtube so if any of you want to go back and look at that portion of the meeting um and then did you have any, um, did you, were there any other McQuan or Plymouth County meetings that you went into since our last meeting? No, okay. No, no one's contacted me. Matt always contacts me and I don't think the reuse has done, I mean, the McQuan has had anything going on. If, yeah. But, um, so, but soon we'll have more information. Okay. Um, Okay, we can move on to foundation. Um, I just had one thing I wanted to say um, before you have, if you have anything, Linda. Um, we had talked at the last meeting about um, the Corey, Corey, possibly Corey um, Foundation um, volunteers. 
Great. And I did. I contacted Mara at the MBLC, um, and I'll just kind of summarize what she said. So she said um, she she had worked at, as an assistant director, and she said that um, from her personal experience, um, volunteers were only queried if they were going to be working in any capacity with children. Um, at her library, they had a um, children's book sale and a, a main book sale, and they only queried like friends volunteers if they worked at the children's book sale. Um, she said, you could always have a policy that requires any volunteer in any capacity to be quarried. Um, but the way she sees it is that if if it's like a, it's a foundation sponsored event, then they're the ones running it. And so that would kind of be similar to quarrying like a per outside performer that you would get, which um, that's not typically done. Um, so it kind of fits with what we already have right now. She said, most libraries just have um, policies about volunteers are actually working in the library, like shelving, things like that, um, which is along the lines of what we have now. So I'm comfortable with basically answer, um, kind of keeping things the way they are. <laughs> that, that bring up, um, if we had a children's program, um, what would that be if, say, we hired someone for a children's program and we sponsored it? Where's the responsibility in the... Right. I mean, that might be the only issue. So if this, there are foundation volunteers at a children's program, um, then, you know, she said that um, in her children's department, they were very strict about not using volunteers for youth programs. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I know obviously we do have, you know, we have like the skating rink, uh, you know, usually we have that every year. Um, so that might be an instance where we would want to have them quarried, um, you know, ahead of time. Um, skating is usually two directors that go to the meeting. Yeah. Skating programs and him. Um, but I mean, if, I mean, but if it's, a, if it's a foundation sponsored event, I think that's what she was saying that you wouldn't. It would be more like if we had a library event, I guess, and then they had foundation people volunteering, okay. a, li a library kids event, which we don't really typically, that doesn't typically happen. Um, so I think kind of it with the, with the skating thing that actually, because it's a foundation event, it, you would sort of be seen as more like an outside performer, which you wouldn't quarry. Does that make sense? It would. Excuse me, you broke up. It would be seen as what? It would be seen as as if you were the foundation members were like outside performers, so you wouldn't quarry them. Okay. That it would be hosted at a different venue. I assume that they take the responsibility of their employees. Yeah, right. Okay. Right. What is Mara's last name? Uh Dee Dee. D E E D Y. Thanks. I was drawing a blank. Um, so that's all I had. If you had something you wanted to add for foundation, Linda. Okay. Um, Pam had said she'd go over some of the updates for the um, baskets. I can read you some of what she told me. Um, she, let's see. I can give a report if um, okay, that would be helpful. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah, so I went by on Saturday and um, we had we put out a cloth and I took um, pictures of all the baskets, um, you know, with sort of the books behind them in the library. So I think that they look good and standardized, and they did an amazing job. She and Erin were working very hard at putting bows on everything and getting them all organized. I probably took pictures of. Um, probably 25 different uh, baskets or, you know, arrangements. And I know that Corinne has some additional ones. Right. Um, she has sent me pictures of all the different baskets, what's in them, so I'm giving her the price points. Right. So I think where I've downloaded and gone through and edited all the photos and what I just need from her is she had a, um, she had a page that had the written kind of summary of each basket. She just needs to send that to me with the written, the price. And um, then I can start posting them on the foundation uh, Facebook page. Okay. And I'll take care of that by tomorrow. I've already given her some. Um, okay. And um, my question was, 
usually when we had silent when it was a silent auction we had a little sign in front of it of the item telling what it was and what's in it and, and the dollar sign are we still doing that or there'll be there'll just be a i think we should have that still and if if you guys send me the stuff i'm happy to print them out and you know we can put them in front of the basket okay. um because you know people are making appointments to walk through and um you know they're not bidding on them they're buying them this time around but it's still nice to have the i think each basket should have a name and um and then a little description and then the price next to it on a little card and i can print that out on stock and and have it for each basket okay great yeah, that does sound great. Thank you, Teresa and Green. I will be back there next week um, because um, I got some more things in. I, well, I have the blankets for the toddlers with books. And um, I had books picked out that were practically new for my son, and I have no idea where I put them. So I just <laughs> went online and I bought a bunch of books. And so I'll put them together. Oh. So I'll be delivering those and um, so I think Pam was going to try to swing by and get those from you and then do her magic of presenting them in the beautiful way that she does and then right. she was going to email me and I'll come by and take photos. Okay. All right. Um, we haven't finalized that so I'll be talking to her on the weekend anyway. Okay. So great. You should be all set. Okay. okay um, I do have a flyer. Uh, maybe I'll go over um, the details of it. Um, and I will be sending it out um, to the listserv shortly. Um, the open house, um, in consulting with Karen, our latest thought is we'll just run it from 9.30 to 2.30, where we're not having the outside portion, um, the hours when the library is open that day keep things consistent um, for the crafts and the snacks, et cetera. Um, people will be able to sign up already on the library's website, calendar events. People can sign up for the kits that um, take and make crafts. They look wonderful. There's five different ones. Um, look like a lot of fun and really popular. Um, and they're going to be able to pick them up curbside or make an appointment starting um, on the day of the open house to pick up the kits. The grab and go snacks will be placed both outside um, on a table spread out. We will need a little sign telling um, people to please take one per person, courtesy of the foundation. And they'll be set up inside on a table, I guess, for the same. Um, the art show is on the fly and that the library is organizing for the fifth year. Um, Winners are going to be announced at 11 o'clock that day. And <clears throat> we're say, saying there's appointment shopping, the debut <clears throat> of the foundation shopping fundraiser to benefit our library, 9.30 to 2.30. Um, visitors have the opportunity to do their holiday shopping by purchasing a variety of items, including a gift baskets, toys, sports themed fleece bags, throws. <clears throat> Items sold out quickly last year, so don't miss this opportunity for first access to shop. Make an appointment for a half hour shopping spot by calling 71293-2151. Then um, <clears throat> Karen suggested we promote the thousand books before kindergarten for that day too. Um, so I think we'll organize for the alternative open house day. Um, any questions or comments on that? Well, sounds good. Yeah, we're really relying on the library staff and we appreciate their assistance under these circumstances. Uh, this um, is Diane. Can I just get some clarification on my right. mind? So the open house will run from 9.30 to 2.30. The snacks will be placed outside on the table with a sign. Um, each crafts. Um, they reserve them. Yeah. They sign up into the calendar of events on the library's website to um, reserve one. All right, reserve ahead of time um, for the take and make crafts. Now that will be available by curbside pickup or by appointment. Right. Uh, our, our show winners will be announced that day. 
gift baskets. You can start the shopping, and we're going to promote the thousand books before kindergarten. Right. I can send you all that. Um, I'm looking at the flyer in front of me um, as soon as we log off. That might help you a little bit. Some people okay. have done it already. Um, now, I did want some input and clarification after the alternative open house on basket sales and the items. Um, we're going to continue um, purchases in the library by appointment. Correct? Yes. That's what we've done before. Right. Yeah. We have a the gift basket. basket. Right. Um, do we need anything? The library will take payment. Um, it will have to be cash or check. Um, and um, will there be updates on like Facebook at all? Or is that possible of what's still available? Or how do we do that? Or do we just leave it in the library for people to browse and see what's available? Um, we can try to monitor and see if, um, and we can do some posts that you guys could share. That would be doing. Okay. Yeah, that's up to date um, posts. And um, I think we have to see how the sales go, possibly, um, and consider at some point if the items aren't moving, adjusting prices. How do you feel about that? And who's going to be responsible? Or don't you like that idea? I think you should just save the baskets if they're not moving and then have them to be sold over a period of time between now and the holidays. Oh, I meant come close to the holidays. Um, if they have, oh. oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if it was like, you know, say 10 days before we could, and we had a few baskets left, then I think we probably should adjust the price. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good I guideline, I think. I'm too early. Yeah. Because with them doing it by appointment, you don't have as many people as we've had in the past. So, right. And I think in the past, we've always somewhat set bargain prices. I don't know if that's what's going to happen this time around, too. So that'll um, play into how the basket sell. Okay. Okay. We have to just see how things go a little bit and be flexible, I think. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyone have anything else on the um, appointment shopping? No, not, I don't. Okay, no. after the open house, I think um, we'll try and get out a separate press release. There has been a press release sent to the Express on the open house. Um, and after the open house, we'll continue to promote the appointment shopping um, various places. Okay, that all sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay, great. Do you have anything else for foundation? Not at this point. We will be okay. working shortly on membership drive, but um, we don't have to talk about that at this point. Okay. Um, so I just want to mention before we go that um, our so the next meeting we'll have to meet on the seventeenth of November, um, six same time six thirty. Um, we I should be getting this week. They're gonna I think send out um, budget information about the budget for FY twenty two. Um, it's due going to be due November twentieth. So I'll be working on that. Um, and then we can, you know, you can approve it at the November 17th meeting. Um, so we'll have to meet before then at that time. Okay. That sounds good. All right. Okay. So we'll plan on doing that. All right. Um, well, I don't have anything else. So. Well, um, I'll call into the Board of Library Trustees meeting October 27th, 2020, 7.14 p.m. All in favor? Second? <laughs> oh, second. Diana. All in favor? Yes, Teresa. Linda, yes. Teresa, yes. Diana, yes. John, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.